Welcome back everybody, Matty here, and today we're talking about the topic of orthorexia, or an unhealthy obsession with healthy eating. So you're so fixated on righteous eating that it actually holds you back from living and enjoying your life. Now I don't want anyone jump into conclusions based on what I talk about here in this video. I'm simply sharing my experience with this from years ago. I've worked with a lot of people and I've gotten a lot of requests to make a video on this topic and spread some awareness about it. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I shared a story about two weeks ago when I went wedding cake tasting. How if that was me three or four years ago, it would have been a completely different situation. I would have been uncomfortable and a lot of you guys agreed and said that you know the feeling. So I think it's important to talk about this topic. So at the top, you'll actually see the words obsession and dedication. Those words are completely different. And some people who are actually obsessed believe that they are dedicated. Now, again, there's a fine line between the two. Someone who's dedicated is committed to something. They're disciplined. They have a strategy about how to approach things. They are sticking to the plan. Someone who's obsessed will cancel out everything else in their life and have a one-track mind. They'll become socially isolated, and it will be difficult for them to live and enjoy their life because they only care about that one thing. So these are some questions that I did not make up. I'll put the link in the description box below. But there's some things to think about, and if you find yourself saying yes or nodding your head to a lot of these, it might be time to kind of reevaluate your diet and your thoughts. Again, I'm not telling you to jump to conclusions on this. I don't want anyone diagnosing themselves. It's just for me to spread some awareness on this topic. So let's jump into the questions here. And again, these are questions that I found myself nodding my head yes to a couple of years back, and it's the experience that I want to share with you all. So first two questions, you have, do you wish to eat and not stress the quality of the food? And do you want to spend less time thinking about food? And yes, I did, but instead, it's all I thought about. I could not sit down to a meal or a snack without constantly thinking what's in this food, having the ingredient list right here, reading through it, reading through the macros, thinking about my next meal, planning out two days in advance, thinking about the weekend when I had to work long hours. How was I possibly going to pack enough meals to get me through a 14 or 15 hour day? And there we got chicken, some almonds, brown rice, and some vegetables, I have cauliflower and broccoli. That meal is exactly the same as this meal right here. Got about five ounces of chicken breast. I got an entire bag of salad. Um, I do like to bring my own salad dressing. And sweet potato. So that goes to show you that there's really no excuses of why you can't get your food together. And these were things that I would think about and I never actually got the chance to enjoy the food that I was eating. Is it difficult to eat a meal prepared by someone else? Now my dad's Italian, he likes to cook, he's a very good cook, but some days he would make that Sunday dinner and I would be sitting there eating out of my Tupperware container. Now there's nothing wrong with people who are dedicated to their plan. I know a lot of you out there are probably competing, maybe bodybuilding, physique, powerlifting, you might have to make weight for something, look a certain way for a competition or a photo shoot, that's fine. If you have to stick to a structured diet, that's completely understandable. But for the rest of us who are just trying to look a little bit better, perform a little bit better in the gym, lose a couple of pounds. Is it so difficult to sit down with your family and enjoy a meal? Even if they told you what was in it, even if they weighed everything out for you and told you there's two tablespoons of olive oil in this, I put three pinches of salt, do you still find it difficult because the meal wasn't prepared by you to enjoy it? And I personally did. It didn't matter who made it. Even if they told me they used this bread and this bacon, and these egg whites, I still in my head could not eat that meal because I wasn't in control of making it. Are you looking for ways foods are unhealthy? So you're always trying to find an excuse to get out of eating a certain food. Let's say for instance pizza. Your friends will probably tell you the only thing that's in pizza is bread, cheese, sauce, and some oil. But in your head, it's very unhealthy for you. There's a ton of oil on it. Cheese is bad for you. It's too much dairy. You're thinking of reasons as to why you can't eat that food instead of just trying to break it down, seeing what components make up that food. Even if you weigh them out, track them into your macros, and they fit your numbers, you still can't eat it because you're trying to find a way that that food is not good for you and you can only stick to a certain number of foods. Your chicken, your egg whites, your sweet potatoes, your oatmeal. So you had a set list of foods you had to eat and everything else was unhealthy in some way. Do you feel guilt when you stray away from your diet? I certainly did. I became socially isolated and I sometimes didn't even go out with my friends or my brothers when they were going to a restaurant. I would find an excuse as to why I couldn't join them because I felt uncomfortable. I couldn't look at a menu and order something because I didn't make that food. So that was something that I really struggled with and that's not fun for anybody, whether you're contest prep or not. If you can't go out with friends and just either make a better choice or 
choose something different. I actually went to restaurants and brought my own food sometimes. So I had a sweet potato with me. I was bringing chicken breast and just ordering a salad so I can add to it. And I knew how much that chicken breast weighed, but I wasn't competing. I was just so obsessed with this that I wasn't in control anymore. The food was actually controlling me. And I know a lot of people deal with that as well. Do you feel in control when sticking to your diet? So you feel like the man or the woman when you stick to everything that you had planned. You don't eat anything that wasn't prepared by you, that's not a Tupperware container. If you went to a restaurant, you just ordered a water or a Diet Coke and went home and ate the meal that you prepared. Again, I wanna drive this point home. If you are someone who is contest prep or is being judged in your physique, you might have to go to some of these extremes. But for anyone else who is just looking to live life and be a bit healthier, you don't have to go to these extremes. Enjoy yourself because your time is limited and you should not let your food be in control of you. You have to remain in control. Putting yourself on a nutritional pedestal. Asking, how can they eat that? So your friends might want to go grab a burger and fries at a restaurant. And all you could think is, are you really going to eat that food? You didn't know if those fries were cooked in this oil or that oil, if that burger was cooked in butter. And some people just don't want to hear it. They don't care. Now, some of your friends might track macros and they might flexible diet and they might be aware of how the food was cooked, but they're able to enjoy their time out and enjoy the time with their friends, their family, or you if you're out with them and they don't want to hear about it. And that's something that I personally did. I would look at some of my friends and be like, that's unhealthy, you shouldn't eat that. That is too many carbs, that has too much sugar. And they didn't really care, but it was something that I felt like I was in control of. I knew more than everyone about nutrition and what I was doing was right. But I was wrong and I was unhappy. So did I look good trying to get to that point? Yeah, but I was miserable in the meantime. So it's all about finding a healthy balance. And that's what this is all about. So again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't want anyone jumping to conclusions. I don't want you diagnosing yourself with orthorexia because you said yes to a bunch of these questions. I just want to make you aware of this and let you know that you can change. It's not forever. Some people are dealing with more serious cases and maybe they should see a medical professional, a nutritionist, someone who specializes in eating disorders. But for a lot of us who maybe occasionally just think about food too much, just try and relax a little bit. I can share my experience with you if you want to send me an email. If you're interested in coaching, we can work through it together. That's what this is all about, spreading awareness on a topic that a lot of people are not too familiar with yet or don't realize how serious it can be. So, with that said, don't let food control you. You are in control. Easier said than done, but it is possible. And today, I can tell you I'm much happier than I've ever been. I've been able to find that balance and enjoy life a lot more. Go to a restaurant and not stress about it. Eat a meal with my family and still make progress both in and outside of the gym. So that is the end of this video. I really sincerely hope that it has helped some of you out. And it would really mean the world to me if you would share this video with other people to get the word out there. So thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for watching. If you want to share your experience in the comment section below, I know it might be personal, but you can help someone else out as well. So you never know who's reading and I'll be reading all the comments as well. So thank you again, guys, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.